When the stars turn blue, my son is you. A Marvel fan fiction written by 8 Nightlight 8 on AO3. Peter's eyes were heavy with sleep. His steps slow and careful as he crossed the dark room and opened the door in order to make his way into the dimly lit kitchen. It was a little over 1am and his throat was dying for a glass of water. He tiptoed past his dad's room, pleased to see no light shining through the doorway, only to turn and be suddenly enveloped by the lambent bluish glow. He recognised it immediately. His eyes started to the direction of the lab and widened as they came to rest at its wide open entrance. When he was younger, he thought the room was magical, that it filled everyone who was ever in it with the power to bring their dreams to reality, as he watched Tony create and research new equipment for the people working on the floors below. Now it only filled him with fear. The door to the lab had stayed locked during the last few months and his dad said he would go into the bed at 11, so here he was now, in the middle of the night, sitting on the couch in the room which seemed seemingly connected to what had caused his breakdown. The boy sat next to him in a heartbeat, and his dad just smiled softly at him when he looked up from the pictures and papers scattered on the coffee table in front of him. There wasn't even a hint of surprise in his eyes, like he knew he would be coming and waiting for him was the reason he was sitting there in the first place. Hey. He patted the face next to him lightly, motioning for his son to join him. You okay? Peter asked, bumping his dad's elbow slightly after sitting down next to him. He almost expected to hear an, I am fine. But they made a deal a few days ago, and telling a lie wasn't an option anymore. Not that Peter had read at least a dozen mental health manuals, not after everything that has happened. He tried to get a read on the man's tired expression, but Tony's eyes only gleamed with fondness as he ran his hand through the boy's hair gently, calming him down instantly. Better now, he nodded towards the table in front of him. I was just digging around the lab, and I found some old stuff. I knew it had to be somewhere, but I really didn't expect it to be- Oh my god! Peter interrupted him suddenly, excitement rushing through him as he picked up the black and white picture of a smiling, chubby baby from the table. Dad, is that you? Tony laughed. A real, genuine laugh. The one that lit up the room. The one that Peter missed. The one he had been yearning to hear for months now. Yeah, kiddo, he said when he caught his breath again. Why? Couldn't ever imagine me looking that ugly, did ya? Peter could feel his cheeks heat up a bit at that, only causing Tony's smile to widen and the man to ruffle his hair again, as he tried to hide his face by looking at the picture more closely. You were just, the boy started, but had to clear so in order to be able to continue normally. You were just so small. Yeah, I was, Tony responded. And so were you. He booped his nose, still grinning at him teasingly. Hell, you were four when you came here, but I was still able to carry you around on my shoulders. Now look at you, turning ten in a few hours and growing like a weed. All the playfulness disappeared from his face at the last two sentences, and his expression turned serious, only for his love of the boy sitting next to him shining through. I want you to have something, he said, his voice quiet but determined, and Peter looked at him expectantly. I know you aren't exactly turning ten till five o'clock, but a birthday is a birthday, he trailed off, picking up something shiny from the cardboard box which was sitting next to his feet, and traced his fingers around the shape lovingly before handing it to his son. It was a pendant, a very expensive pendant. Peter turned it round in his palm carefully, observing how the lab's blue light bounced off the heart-shaped precious stone and showered the ceiling with thousands and thousands of small, glittering drops of light. It's a diamond, Tony supplied gently, before passing one of the black and white photos to the boy as well. It belonged to my mom. Peter looked at the photograph, only to find a long-haired, kind-looking woman smiling towards him, her eyes shining with happiness as she smelled at the bouquet of roses she had probably just received. When he looked closely, he could see the top end of the pendant lying against her neck, peeking out from behind the blossoming flowers. She was beautiful, he whispered, somehow unable to break free of the silence. He wasn't really sure how to react. His dad had never told him anything about his family before. Never. Smart, too, Tony spoke quietly, also a shadow of a sad smile finding its place on his lips. And kind. She was always kind. To anybody. Even when she probably shouldn't be. She, she was an amazing person. The best person I knew. He sighed, and the boy could see him looking out of the corner of his eyes. So he leaned into his side and let his dad's right arm embrace him before he continued. My father gave her the locket as her wedding present. She wore it day in and day out. There is no memory I have of her without it. The locket? Peter turned the pendant around in his hand, only to find that the silver he thought was the back actually lay in the middle of a finely cut crystal. 
a hand threaded through his hair again, only to find his dad already looking down at him. You can open it if you want. His voice was hoarse now, but still gentle, loving. There used to be a picture of me and my dad inside it, but I altered it for you earlier. He glanced at his clock before nudging the boy slightly, then grins again. You can call this one 2 a.m. birthday present. I bet it's anything than half he could have decided to taunt you with this year. Peter didn't respond. He couldn't. Because the locket was now open in his palm, the photo of him and Tony laughing in a half hug somewhere in Provence was staring back at him. It was everything. Everything he ever wanted. Everything he ever needed. Just the two of them. Happy and without a worry in the world. It's amazing, he finally managed, his voice breaking a little. Tony rubbed his arm a bit, wrapping him in warmth. She would want you to have it. With everything that's been going on, I just wanted it to be a reminder, I guess. I am doing better now. You know I am. But with what happened with him before, I want you to know that I love you more than anything. Always, no matter what happens. You come first, whatever you say or do. You are the best thing that ever happened to me. Although I was pretty shitty at showing it to you for a while. You always come first. Always.